this is a, again a joint initiative of time for cs and incentive projects you know the project uh, very well at this point uh, it has been a long journey so far with around eight webinars and as you know time for cs and incentive uh, share the, the same objectives we have been funded under the, the same call and today we're here uh, to discuss about one, I would say one of both projects main asset objective, uh, which is uh, citizen science hubs and contact points. And we will, we will have a, an interesting discussion coming from um, two pilots, I would say two implementers and two case studies at this point experienced case studies of both projects since uh, unfortunately, our projects are coming to an end. So at this stage, uh, both case studies have pretty much uh, long experience in implementing some actions and growing in this sense. So we will be going through best practices, resources, how to efficiently set up a citizen science hub and institutional contact point, what are the resources needed and so on and so forth. And as always, I would uh, like to encourage you all to raise your hand, uh, to ask questions or to write them in the chat. I will be there in the chat looking for, for your questions and collecting them. I see scrolling quickly into participants. I see a lot of familiar faces also. So please raise your, your hand and your questions. And as always, at the end of the webinar, we will be reaching out to you all again sending you all the materials and presentations you will see through the webinar. And with that being said, um, I would like to leave the floor to Monica from Incentive Project. And uh, so enjoy this webinar and Monica, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to confirm if all of you can see my screen. Perfect then. Yes. So hello everyone, it's nice to see so many familiar and also some new uh, faces representing both projects and our broader community. Um, today um, we will talk about the, our experience in establishing citizen science hubs, uh, mostly focused on Lithuania as um, uh, both me and Agli, the next presenter, represent two um, uh, large universities here in uh, Lithuania. So we'll start this presentation uh, with some overview of what is the goal and the essence of institutional contact points um, of citizen science in um, different universities and research performing organizations. Then I will talk a bit about the context of uh, Lithuania in, and in what kind of context we had to establish, uh, establish these hubs. Um, uh, later, I will talk about uh, our uh, hub uh, in uh, Vilnius Techin. University, um, which was established as a result of uh, incentive project. And then Agle will take over with the presentation of Time for CS and their experiences in uh, Kona's um, University of Technology. And uh, finally, uh, our webinar will end with a discussion moderated by Ailita Skarzhauskina from Incentive Project. And hopefully this discussion will allow us to elaborate a bit more on the experiences of establishing these hubs around, around the, uh, Europe. So um, let's talk about the citizen open science in European Union, as probably most of you um, know, in Horizon 2020, in the previous framework program, uh, open science and citizen engagement activities were um, piloted um, in different parts of the program to see how um, they could be mainstreamed into broader um, program parts of um, the framework program. Uh, the current framework program, Horizon Europe, uh, has established the importance of openness um, in all parts of the program, and now it is um, uh, mainstreamed uh, uh, in all uh, all the all the pillars uh, of, um, um, uh, of of the program. 
And in this regard, open science is not limited to uh, open access or open databases. It has a much broader uh, understanding uh, because openness is also uh, reached and sought th through uh, collaboration. So uh, this means um, the projects and different research activities have to expand their audiences, uh, develop new tools um, and methods of uh, research organization and process, and engage the public in variety um, in variety of forms. Uh, in this regard, the institutional contact points um, at research performing organizations um, uh, allow to advocate the, this message by European Union that the open and citizen science should be mainstream across the different kind of um, activities. Uh, so these serve as uh, points and dedicated hubs and centers that facilitate and promote collaboration between researchers, citizens, and various um, uh, stakeholders. Uh, we can. There are many definitions and many. Um, uh, ways of uh, how the uh, hub or a center could be run. However, we could establish three main um, avenues of their uh, activities. Uh, so the first one is bridging the gap between the general public and the scientific community. In this regard, institutional contact points serve as intermediaries uh, between the citizens and uh, um, and researchers who are willing to engage citizens and showcase, showcase their work to a broader audiences and also involve um, citizens into the uh, scientific um, uh, process more um, proactively. Uh, the second avenue of activities is fostering uh, collaboration. So most of the um, uh, contact points or the hubs uh, uh, serve as dedicated platforms uh, for citizen activities in different uh, universities and encourage uh, collaboration between researchers, citizens, the policymakers, and other important um, stakeholder groups, which could be grouped at, under the quadruple helix uh, uh, model. Um, and the last element is promotion of open science and RRI. Even though the European Union is promoting these uh, concepts, uh, concepts quite actively, still there is a um, lack of awareness and in-depth knowledge on how to apply these principles in the in the research um, and in different uh, fields of uh, in different fields of science. So the researchers themselves uh, don't have the full knowledge and full uh, set of skills and needed to um, open up the research process to broader uh, groups of stakeholders. So in this regard, the uh, contact points uh, serve uh, also as uh, places where the researchers could uh, gain um, um, these needed skills, uh, increase their capacities, and learn uh, how to uh, be more open, uh, more open to the public. Um, even though it so sounds very nice, in essence, the um, hubs uh, um, and centers uh, face a number of buyers um, um, in setting up their operations. Uh, the first one, the most notable one, is the funding problem, uh, uh, problem because establishing and maintaining these um, uh, hubs require financial resources uh, for different uh, elements, so infrastructure, uh, personal, and also outreach activities, and uh, securing sustainable funding can be a challenge because you have to, if, if you don't have the funding from the European Union, you have to sell this idea um, to responsible people at your uh, organization and it's not always an easy um, task. Uh, the second uh, uh, big challenge is the coordination uh, because uh, the hubs require to bring uh, together uh, different stakeholder groups, which uh, of course have a very different interests um, and expertise and also traditions of working and collaborating and different perspectives of science. So um, the establishment and running of the hub uh, uh, requires uh, clear communication um, and collaboration, which of course uh, uh, is complex. Mostly because the universities not always have uh, um, the abilities or the experience of how to communicate with those stakeholder uh, stakeholder groups. 
Uh, the third um, barrier is uh, cultural tradition. So um, not always the uh, researchers themselves uh, believe in opening up their scientific process to broader uh, publics. Um, and uh, also there are some regions um, in the Europe, um, especially in the widening countries group, where the tradition of collaboration between science and society is limited. So for example, in case of Lithuania, um, there's a, a kind of big trouble of of, uh, trust, uh, given our complex um, uh, complex history uh, and newly found um, freedom, uh, and um, uh, and because of that, uh, uh, a lot of uh, stakeholders are suspicious of the collaboration and not really um, are keen to join different kind of collaboration activities. Of course, this is changing over time. Uh, however, this could also serve um, as a barrier in uh, setting up um, uh, different um, different hubs. Um, the resource constraints also serve as a limitation in running and setting up the hubs uh, because uh, um, the staff and training um, are um, essential for successful implementation, and this is not always uh, available. So researchers or administrative staff have other important uh, responsibilities in their work, and they cannot always dedicate uh, their efforts uh, to running of the um, um, of the hub. We also see quite uh, a lot of barriers related to data quality and ethics. Uh, so since uh, um, citizen science and open science practices require um, ensuring of the quality and ethical handling of the data, uh, this uh, also requires specific set of skills uh, not available at, um, at the universities. So um, addressing these concerns and establishing the hubs is essential in maintaining the credibility of research. And the last one is sustainability. And this is especially relevant in the projects um, established uh, um, with the support of uh, uh, European Union or national funding um, uh, uh, bodies uh, because uh, after the funding ends, um, it is difficult to uh, maintain the presence of the hub and activity levels as high as it was during the um, implementation of um, the project. Uh, it also means that sustainability, in terms of sustainability, uh, the hubs need to uh, continuously adapt to the changing needs and expectations um, to remain relevant. Uh, the science and the way we approach uh, um, the public is uh, constantly changing. So in thinking about the sustainability, we have to consider um, these, um, um, these elements um, too. So now moving on to our um, own experience in establishing the citizen science uh, uh, hubs in Lithuania. As I said, we will present two cases um, of the hubs, one in uh, Vilnius Tech University, and I will talk about it a bit. And then uh, Konas, the University of Technology, um, presented by Agla Butkavich. So in order to understand how these hubs operate and what kind of uh, goals they want to achieve, it is important to understand the context in which we are operating and establishing these uh, hubs. Uh, so looking at the public uh, policy debate and legislation that is related uh, to citizen and open science in Lithuania, we see that um, there is still very limited guidance and legislation uh, uh, related to that. We have the open access uh, guidelines, um, national open access guidelines. However, the only focus on the uh, data aspects um, um, and uh, do not pay attention to the more softer approaches uh, to open science, such as um, engagement and, um, um, and inclusion of broader stakeholder groups. Uh, despite the limitations uh, of the uh, political system or, or legislation, we do have plenty of initiatives by scientists, uh, librarians, university administration, and systems themselves that are related to a broader engagement of the um, uh, of the public. Uh, well, one example of that is the establishment of a citizen science association. Um, uh, me, together with colleagues, uh, established uh, this association in 2020, so already uh, three years um, ago. 
and the association serves um, as a platform for different universities to collaborate, uh, to spread the best practice, to collaborate in preparing the proposals and also helping out uh, um, the citizens and um, um, the scientific community to, um, um, to connect. We do have also a number of large-scale European projects uh, with Lithuanian beneficiaries from Lithuanian research institutions. So here I added um, uh, a few of the biggest universities here in, in Lithuania. So for example, Vilnius Tech has three uh, projects and Center Fab Citizen and Climate, which um, are focused on building the capacities of researchers uh, in, in our community uh, in regards to RRI and open uh, science. Uh, Kona's um, University of Technology also has uh, several projects which are still ongoing or recently finished uh, with the focus on citizen engagement. So in this regard, different institutions and different researchers are gaining uh, the experience and um, know-how from partners um, in, um, in more experienced um, um, institutions and also countries which have longer traditions of collaborations with the uh, uh, citizens and other stakeholders groups. Um, and these projects uh, um, in a lot of cases help um, uh, the community to gain the knowledge needed and the um, uh, practice needed in, in, in running the hubs and also implementing the projects uh, with um, together with citizens. Uh, we also have uh, several um, initiatives uh, which uh, were established either by the individual researchers and not supported by institutions or by communities or individual citizens. So most of them uh, are uh, related to biodiversity um, and exploration of uh, nature. Uh, so for example, the, the last one here on the slide, uh, it's called birdlife.lt. Uh, and um, in, in this case, um, uh, researchers are invited, um, um, the community is invited to uh, count the birds in their uh, um, backyards uh, at the specified time of um, the year in order to see the migration patterns and um, uh, changes in the way birds uh, operate in Lithuania. We also have a number of resources in Lithuanian on citizen science prepared, either um, in the capacity of um, uh, citizen science association or as a result uh, of different um, um, international and national projects focused on citizen science. And in this regard, uh, um, it, it helps to spread uh, the news about citizen science um, um, in our community, explain it, uh, um, explain the essence of it and the tools of it uh, to the researchers in their own language, uh, which uh, um, I think is uh, highly needed and um, um, highly valuable uh, because it's if you read something in English or other languages, you might think that uh, it's not for you, it's too complicated and so on. And if you see some resources in your own language, it's easier for you to understand how you could apply it in your own context. Um, in terms of um, um, the context, we also conducted uh, um, a large scale survey in 2021 as part of the Incentive project. And um, uh, we looked at the context uh, of establishing uh, the hubs through more quantitative perspective. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, in, uh, we, we the survey um, uh, included around 2,000 uh, people. The Lithuanian sample was a bit uh, smaller, 342 people. And uh, we do see that the majority of um, people who responded to our survey are not familiar or only somewhat familiar with the concept of um, um, of the um, citizen science and what what it means so we did see at the beginning of an incentive project that there like large gap exists um, and we do need to address this awareness um, issue in establishing um, the hub 
the same survey also uh, showed that different stakeholder groups like academia, public administration, private sector, and also the general public do want to be included um, in citizen science activities. However, they do not have the resources or knowledge on how to do that. So um, with this in mind, um, the, um, um, the hub was established and our strategic guidelines were um, defined. Uh, as part of uh, one research uh, project, which was uh, developed in our national context, it was called CS for Welfare, we also looked at different barriers and drivers of citizen science implementation in Lithuania. So this was more of a, a qualitative um, um, perspective on the situation. And we did see, see a number of limitations uh, related to implementation of citizen science. So first of all, um, fragmented understanding um, of the concept of citizen science. So this confirms the survey results too. We do see limited uh, institutional support uh, uh, where the universities or research institutes um, do not have uh, um, understanding of why open science and citizen science should be supported and why it is needed and what kind of benefits it brings to different uh, organizations and individual researchers. Uh, we do see, as in other parts of Europe, that the evaluation uh, is uh, institutional and national level of evaluation is focused on articles in high impact journals and not open science related activities. So this um, of course, leads to lack of motivation uh, by scientists to engage uh, with broader stakeholder groups uh, because their pay is not uh, and their career is not dependent on, on engagement activities. Uh, we also see limited understanding among different stakeholder groups uh, on the principles on the design, implementation, and management of citizen science projects, just because there are limited number of successful examples of citizen science projects uh, um, here in national context or even in the neighboring uh, countries. Um, a bit broader problem is limited skills in communication and science outreach. So, um, the, the researchers at different level, levels of their careers do not receive um, training and support in communication and science outreach. Uh, so it's um, hard to put out the messages to broader society because um, the, the support and the skills are not just not there. And also the last point is the lack of cooperation between different stakeholder groups. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, there are a number of trust related issues in the ecosystem of RNI and broader um, in the broader society and uh, Lithuania as a country has still overcome that and look for ways of how to connect um, uh, different stakeholder groups. So against this backdrop, uh, we did uh, um, a number of uh, workshops and a number of co-creation and collaboration activities together with our stakeholders of Vilnius Tech, but also together with the partners of and Center Project in establishing the um, uh, Vilnius Tech Citizen Science Hub and also um, defining the strategic direction of our hub and on what kind of activities we have to uh, we have to uh, focus. So our hub uh, was formally established uh, um, um, this year in uh, April, uh, but before we did have already some presence, mostly in online form. So we did have the website uh, of um, uh, a hub operating for, I think, a few years now already. Uh, and um, this served as a place and a platform for us to um, spread the information, upload resources, uh, promote events, uh, and, um, and 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 um, uh, and keep all the necessary information related to citizen science and open science in one place um, as an institution. Um, in terms of the strategic direction, we base our work on three principles, so openness and transparency, co-creation, and sharing of practical experience. And in regard to a specific tasks and strategic direction that we have, uh, this slide presents a bit uh, better. So our short-term goals uh, are marked in, uh, in not in red, I don't know how to call this 
color. It's between the red and violet. <laughs> so uh, are uh, below in the um, in the presentation. So our short term goals during the direct uh, duration of incentive project was to uh, first raise awareness through outreach and dissemination activities uh, by organizing events, uh, sending out newsletters, and social media activity, and so on. And also to develop materials in Lithuanian on citizen science, RRI, and open science. So as we saw, our community did not have enough knowledge on these specific contexts, and our focus was particularly on that at this point of our hub implementation. We also strive to engage the community of uh, Vilnius Tech by organization of networking activities in, which were aimed to create synergies between different stakeholder groups. Um, and I will talk about that a bit later in slides with some more specific examples. Uh, we also uh, did series of training events for researchers at various levels with a specific focus on PhD students because we do believe that they are you know, the future and uh, we should focus on uh, changing their mindset uh, with the hope that citizen engagement activities with ball will be more stream mainstreamed uh, when they become more advanced researchers. Uh, our long-term goals um, uh, are related to implementation of actual citizen science projects. So we understood that we first need to create the, the awareness and the capacities of our community and only then move on to actual implementation of um, the project. So uh, currently, um, a few of them are under undeveloped and uh, development, but we did not plan to launch any of these citizen science projects during the duration of um, incentive. So looking into some best practices we noticed uh, during the establishment of the hub and uh, in implementation of the goals that we set up for, for us. Uh, so we did see that the collaboration with other projects and initiatives that were hosted by Vilnius Tech, by our university, not necessarily related to open science and citizen science, was a very great way to uh, reach a broader uh, community and to reach um, uh, buy-in of different stakeholders at different levels in our institution. So uh, some examples of that include um, Athena uh, project, uh, and Vilnius Tech is uh, a part of that. So by collaborating uh, with the representatives of the project, uh, we aim to reach um, uh, those uh, people in our institution uh, who are responsible for making um, uh, decisions um, at the university level. And we were able to uh, showcase them the importance of the uh, open science because the other partners in the Athena network, they understand it and the um, Vilnius Tech representatives also want to catch up and uh, and um, be a part of the open science movement now. So we did uh, saw that the different projects uh, projects at Vilnius Tech uh, serve also as platforms to connect with active people in our community and um, and and um, allows us to broadcast uh, our messages um, uh, further. Uh, we also saw uh, a key value in engaging lectures or professors and students and integration of citizen science related activities into curricula. Uh, so we did that through a few different avenues. Uh, one was through development of learning materials and learning scenarios for um, uh, high schools in which Vilnius Tech is in cooperation with uh, through the FAB Citizen um, project, uh, which is Erasmus Plus project, uh, which is hosted here in Vilnius Tech too. Um, so this allowed us to go to schools and showcase them uh, the added value of citizen science and showcase different uh, activities teachers um, could do uh, with their uh, with their students and, and, and increase awareness of um, citizen science. Uh, we also um, will launch uh, a section on citizen science in sustainability summer school, which will be organized this September in Vilnius Tech. Uh, so uh, in this regard, we will invite both the students and um, uh, their professors uh, to a um, training session on citizen science. And as a result, um, uh, citizen science activities will be integrated into, um, into curricula of, um, of different subjects uh, hosted here at Vilnius, um, uh, hosted here at Vilnius Tech. 
Um, we also did a number um, of um, activities related to citizen science in Lithuanian schools uh, by collaborating with um, um, uh, the uh, Center of Informal Education in Lithuania because they have the uh, Closest connection to um, uh, closest connections to uh, to um, uh, teachers and also to the um, uh, to the to the students. So I talked for a long time. Maybe it's time to <laughs> change the presenter and talk about experience of time for CS. And after this, uh, we can summarize all the barriers and best practices and move on to our discussion. So Agle, if you are ready. Uh, go ahead. I will change right. the slides when you say. Okay, yes, good. Uh, thank you, Monica, for a, a really a good presentation of Lithuanian context. And uh, actually, as already Monica has mentioned, uh, we will talk about two cases. And uh, coincidentally, uh, both two cases are uh, in Lithuania. So actually, today I also will present uh, the experience of Kaunas University of Technology uh, in establishing Citizen Science Hub under the uh, Time for CS project. Next, please. Uh, in Time for CS, uh, our institution has focused on four major actions or uh, ground actions that we implemented uh, with the uh, aim to uh, perceive transformations in uh, particular areas. One of the grounding action was uh, research. Uh, another one was education and awareness. Uh, also support the resources and infrastructure, and the fourth one was policy and assessment. All these grounding actions uh, have been uh, formulated in a way that uh, was strengthening each other. And um, uh, the establishing of uh, Citizen Science Hub, and um, currently we sometimes call it Virtual Citizen Science Hub because the of course, we have a place in library for Citizen Science Hub, but also the major thing is uh, uh, happening online as, as a platform to collaborate for uh, scientists and um, citizens. Uh, so this uh, uh, action, uh, Citizen Science Hub, uh, falls under the uh, grounding action, uh, which is called Support Resources and Infrastructures. Uh, in this uh, uh, grounding actions, we have been focusing on several activities. First of all, to identify institutional contact points for Citizen Science Hub and uh, uh, to facilitate and support uh, citizen science activities in our institution, but also um, to uh, like have an impact on uh, ecosystem in Lithuania to strengthen citizen science awareness and uh, engagement in citizen science uh, uh, through the general public. Uh, so all other actions have been strengthening uh, the um, uh, like this grounding action, uh, which is the mainly was focused on the establishment. And uh, I would say not just in establishment, but also in acting of citizen science hub. Uh, so uh, such a grounding action as research uh, was uh, focused on uh, developing and expanding research projects using citizen science methodology. And here uh, KTU has a substantial number of projects that are running with the, uh, with the use of citizen science methodology. Not just to mention Time for CS, we also are engaged in such, a pro such projects as UCount, uh, which is focused on engaging engaging uh, vulnerable youth groups uh, uh, from Lithuania and also other countries um, uh, 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 like to increase social inclusion of vulnerable uh, youth groups uh, through citizen science. Uh, ProBlue, which is focused on um, expanding uh, the network of blue schools, but also uh, presenting uh, aspects of citizen science and introducing citizen science into schools. Uh, the recent uh, project Reconnect, which is on national level, uh, also will focus on the quantitative perceptions of public uh, uh, to uh, uh, how citizen science is uh, evaluated, how citizen science uh, is widespread in Lithuania. 
And also uh, the Citizen uh, Science for Welfare, the project that was led by KTU and Monica has already mentioned some findings of this project. Uh, this project served uh, for KTU as the base to kind of understand what are the perceptions of stakeholders uh, uh, of uh, the ecosystem uh, in Lithuania and what are the needs uh, then uh, that might be addressed and strengthened through the establishing of citizen science hub and uh, um, these research activities uh, led us to better understand what are the needs of stakeholders uh, and how we can shape citizen science uh, uh, hub in uh, ktu also, we are focusing on establishing uh, citizen science networks. And um, uh, for example, uh, we are actively participating in EXA, uh, participating in working groups, uh, and um, contributing with for ideas, with for uh, the uh, research results. Uh, also, I am a co founding member uh, together with Monica and one one or other colleague of Lithuania Citizen Science Association. So that's why KTU is also active uh, in uh, our national, on our national level as well. Uh, the second grounding action was focused on education and awareness. And here we set up training programs for researchers and for citizen scientists. So uh, we provide trainings uh, for general public, but also for uh, our uh, colleagues at KTU, but uh, not just KTU, we are open. We are inviting also uh, scientists from other universities who are willing to participate because all these trainings are open to society. And also we are focusing on um, like including citizen science perspective in bachelor and master and PhD programs. So under this project, we also is the established a new PhD course on uh, communication, public communication and citizen science, which is offered uh, for our uh, PhD students. Uh, also, we are focusing on developing um, uh, easy accessible materials for scientists and general public, for example, uh, under the uh, Citizen Science for Welfare project, uh, as you saw, we developed, uh, uh, that was the first uh, Citizen Science project in Lithuania. And uh, we are happy uh, that uh, we could develop a result, a monograph, a full monograph, uh, which is uh, open access. We actually dis distribute this monograph through uh, the association website that uh, everyone may access uh, also through the institutional website uh, uh, that even you are connected to institutional repository of KTU, you can access freely the monograph uh, that is based on data from C uh, CS for Welfare Project. And this is the first uh, uh, substantial book in Lithuanian. Uh, uh, in the final language for everyone to read and uh, understand better what does it mean citizen science. Uh, so, and also policy and uh, assessment uh, grounding action. Uh, it also was supporting citizen science, um, uh, establishment of citizen science hub as well, uh, because uh, uh, sometimes we need this institutional uh, policies uh, that support uh, is establishment of uh, some um structures within the uh, institution uh, so uh, we um, uh, like that was a, a quite uh, long and a little bit bureaucratic way uh, to establish but we are happy to say that uh, it was uh, uh, successful and um, uh, in 2022 we established citizen science hub uh, so the main um, idea is uh to join the uh, forces with other projects. And as uh, uh, LIPCOS project, uh, it's um, from uh, Erasmus, pro Erasmus project, uh, is also implemented by KTU. And um, uh, Time for CS also uh, established this uh, Citizen Science Hub. We uh, decided to work together uh, in these projects and uh, uh, to move Citizen Science uh, Hub into the library. Uh, because um, uh, it's um, we've heard that it would be uh, better to have a citizen science hub in a library uh, 
uh, because the um, uh, library is a place that the, where everyone is coming and uh, uh, everyone is um, um, like, um, it's a place where like scientists that meet the uh, uh, general public and uh, it's open to, to society that's why we decided that the best place to, to have citizen science hub and uh, uh, to have a, uh, someone who is representing citizen science hub and uh, uh, like can provide consultations um uh, that might be the library and i saw um i stem uh, she is currently representing uh, Citizen Science Hub, and uh, she is a main contact uh, uh, with whom citizens might connect and ask all the questions. I saw her in the seminar as well as a participant. Uh, next, please. So the overall goal of our hub was uh, to establish infrastructure and uh, uh, to have all organizational and, uh, and arrangements that enable and facilitate development of citizen science on the institutional level, but also in a broader uh, ecosystem as well. So in uh, this project time for CS project, we specifically uh, had two objectives. So first of all, to establish a virtual, virtual hub uh, and appoint uh, the contact point uh, for citizen science initiatives. And also uh, the second uh, and the, the most, I think, uh, uh, prominent uh, goal is to sustain virtual hub because uh, that is uh, always a problem when projects are finished, right? Uh, so um, we did, uh, as I said already, we did... Um, a neat assessment uh, from the stakeholders' uh, perspective, and uh, uh, we saw two major uh, gaps uh, that initiated and uh, and uh, fostered our um, uh, willingness to establish this hub. So first of all, uh, we seek to close the gap uh, because there is a lack of dedicated personnel that could answer uh, the citizen science related issues and to coordinate the actions towards citizen science development on the university level. So uh, we really need uh, some uh, hub of uh, that provides consultations and uh, provides consultations within the university, but also to provides consultations on a, uh, for the broader uh, general public. And also uh, the lack of citizen science hubs in Lithuania uh, or contact points that actually, uh, as already Monica presented the context of Lithuania, uh, uh, as you see, uh, citizen science is um, uh, just uh, uh, in the beginning of adoption through the like perceptions of the general public. So that's why it's um, important to have all initiatives, all um, uh, infrastructures working uh, to widespread this, these ideas. Next, please. Uh, and we try to uh, establish uh, and uh, uh, create this hub uh, from the co-creative approach, using the co-creative approach. And uh, we uh, had uh, different uh, workshops uh, to understand uh, uh, better stakeholder needs. And uh, as I already mentioned, we took uh, the um, um, results from the project that was uh, implemented in KTU, uh, CS. Uh, uh, for welfare, uh, from the interviews with uh, different stakeholders. We also did workshops uh, with internal personnel on university level, including perspectives of other faculties of administration and uh, library. We also worked with different research um, groups at our faculty to better understand what is needed. And um, uh, pl uh, next, please. Uh, from this, we uh, actually discussed benefits and uh, uh, challenges for Citizen Science Hub and what kind of actions we might take. Of course, uh, uh, this is a success story that we uh, established this hub and it's starting the, its activities. Uh, but also we see some barriers and obstacles uh, for running this um, um, this hub as first of all, uh, the motivation is one of the challenges. Uh, why do we need it, right? And uh, sometimes um, uh, it's... Um, uh, 
something is running uh, good when everyone is motivated, right? So to increase motivation of scientists to offer ideas for citizen science projects is one of the challenges because um, sometimes people are really busy with their research and including uh, uh, lay people into your research projects sometimes is uh, time consuming and not everyone is willing to do this. Uh, also, on the other hand, um, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, lay people uh, also uh, might uh, not be very much interested in some topics that scientists are presenting. So it's uh, the motivation is one of the challenges to uh, widespread citizen science projects in Lithuania. Another one is sustainability of funding. So what's next uh, after the um, project is finished. Uh, so we also developed uh, uh, strategies how to sustain a citizen science hub because sustainability of this project and uh, finding other funding opportunities uh, to run citizen science uh, hub uh, in the future is one of the next steps that we want to implement and uh, for sure assure the uh, smooth running of citizen science in the future. And next, please, and that's the last slide. Um, so what are these next steps? So first of all, to communicate clearly the added value of citizen science for institutions and for uh, what is the value of hub for different stakeholder groups, including lay people, researchers, management of the institution. Also to create sustainability plans, as I said, to keep all these uh, grounding actions running after the finishing of the project. And also to foresee uh, further financial resources and of, also, of course, human resources as well, to stimulate all initiatives uh, that uh, engage lay people and scientists together to work together on citizen science project so thank you thank you Agla uh, so now we move on to the discussion part moderated by Ayelita Ayelita are you here yeah I'm here hello can you hear me well okay so I saw already during your presentation, uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for these comprehensive uh, presentations about uh, all activities. And I know from my experience uh, uh, how many uh, efforts are behind these presentations and behind these results, which are already visible for a broader community. But maybe we start the discussion with the questions to the presenters, because I saw already some questions in the chat. So maybe somebody want to, to ask the questions. And we move then forward to the uh, questions of the discussion. So, either, yeah. So, Agla, you can see already one question in the chat. Yes, and I was trying mm -hmm. to answer uh, in uh, typing, but uh, of course, I can. Uh, uh, answer Maybe. in, in the, mm -hmm. uh, actually um, speaking as well. So uh, Kelly uh, uh, is asking, is the virtual hub uh, that I mentioned uh, is lo just locally in Lithuania? Yes, we established this uh, virtual hub or, or citizen science hub uh, as institutional uh, contact point, um, uh, but of course it's working in a broader context. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, ah, so Alessio, mm -hmm. yeah, so thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. The, the, the three of you, by the way, uh, I have like an internal question because you know, part of time for CS, but I was curious during your presentation, Segle and Monica. So, it's a question for both of you. You know, we, we always talk about things in general uh, in uh, EU projects, we do activities, we implement some other and we reach some ob objectives, but sometimes you just get curious about real stories. So like my question for you was, uh, do you have any practical example, any success story of implementation of your citizen science hubs or institutional contact point so far? Like 
I don't know, maybe a student that came to you and asked for something and then you succeeded in helping him mm -hmm. or her or stuff like that. I was curious about success stories you can tell us. Thank you. Okay. I can go ahead and, and, and be first and answer this question. And I saw a related question by uh, Floor um, in the chat and on how the communities approached us uh, as platforms. So I think the... Uh, the best experience, so maybe I'll start from the beginning. So when we started the the Incentive project and started to work uh, in activities related um, to citizen science, we felt as nothing is clear to us. <laughs> we did not know who to contact, uh, how to do the presentations, what kind of resources we should suggest and so on. Uh, and it seemed for a long time that we were just going around talking to different groups of people and nothing happened as uh, as a result. However, in the last uh, half a year, I think, or maybe even a year, uh, I think our active efforts in just going to different conferences, meetings, um, project meetings, or uh, I don't know, different kind of events that happened uh, in, in our university, but also in other universities uh, in Lithuania, uh, so as a result, uh, different communities and institutions uh, began to contact us uh, and uh, to ask about how they could uh, incorporate citizen science activities into, uh, into their work. So one example is the National Library of Lithuania, which uh, contacted um, us as a hub in order to, uh, first of all, meet, learn about citizen science because they, they heard the term, but they did not know how to include that uh, into their activities and what kind of benefit they will bring and what kind of resources they need to provide and what is the what is the goal of citizen science. So this was um, rather satisfying, I think, uh, because our <laughs> um, our efforts finally paid off. So I cannot say that very concrete citizen science projects happened already but did we did but this wasn't our goal as i said during our presentation our goal was to start talking with the community and start uh, start uh, um um start uh, seeing where those connections uh, could um, uh, could uh, could happen uh, another example of uh, um, a community or institution reaching out to us is uh, transparency international uh, lithuanian chapter the conduct a number of activities uh, related to data collection, especially um, related to open data in different uh, municipalities in, in Lithuania specifically, and also uh, approach us with the idea projects related to the So Monica, we cannot hear you anymore. So maybe I, I, I would love to ask also because we have... Uh, Can I ask, answer two... as well the question? Yeah. yeah, yeah, because I think we have like 40 participants and maybe somebody from participants could share the experience, not only you and Monica all talking all the time. So maybe later you can add something because if, if nobody wants, so we can, because Monica is stopped now. So, of course, Agla, you can share your experience now and maybe somebody will prepare their uh, like questions or sharing experience as well. Okay, Agla? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, to answer uh, Alessia's question, actually, uh, yes, of course, we have this... Actually, I would say uh, these um, uh, small uh, good practice cases, right, uh, uh, that um, uh, actually... Uh, also, uh, like showing that Citizen Science Hub does its work, and uh, actually, it's really like um, uh, good to have it uh, in the institution. So, uh, I would uh, mention several um, um, situations that actually served as the, the uh, two way spread citizen science idea through the Citizen Science Hub. For example, uh, the first one was on the institutional level. I was uh, um, contacted by the uh, dean of uh, another faculty, faculty of architecture, and they, uh, have, he was saying, oh, we are doing this kind of projects and we want to cooperate. We do not call them citizen science projects, but as I see, uh, it might be classified as citizen science 
science project. So we would like to work together. And uh, actually, this is one of the cases. Uh, also, um, I would say uh, we attracted uh, PhD students that uh, also were interested in uh, uh, like doing citizen science projects uh, or including citizen science approach in their dissertations uh, through the dissemination activities that we focused. And also I would say uh, the best practice is also to connect all the projects that we are implementing. And um, as I said, we uh, already also are engaged in uh, another the uh, Horizon 2020 project like you count which where we work with schools and uh, school children uh, we work with for uh, in pro blue we work also with school children so all these projects they are, are strengthening um, uh, uh, networks and when you want to kind of uh, explain something it's very good to have a reference and uh, through citizen science hub to uh, encourage and uh, foster these uh, uh, corporations and networks. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, I was disconnected. <laughs> I don't know how my, I was talking for a long time when I saw that the connection is off. So I don't know where I was cut off. I can continue. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thank you. So Agla then uh, talked after you. So it's okay. So I see already. Uh, so this, from... you, could see, you could see, yeah, in action how connected our ecosystem is. <laughs> mm -hmm. We can continue each other's thoughts. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So I see some already. Uh, uh, Shiam, uh, he sent a message about uh, like citizen science elective course for full semester at Nalanda University. So it's very, very actually interesting. Could you maybe share with us your experience how it works? So it would be very, I think, I valuable for this discussion. Uh, actually, when I returned back from the um, Germany after my Hamburg uh, program, so I learned about citizen science in Germany. Then I participated in several of the citizen science program. I naturally is uh, cloud of job uh, of the NASA and uh, like uh, these uh, um, season watch in India. And uh, I naturally uh, this uh, 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 like eBird and all kinds of things. Then I realized uh, we need uh, some kind of the, especially from, because I'm in the School of Ecology and Environmental Science, I thought it is a, one of the most uh, uh, sought after subject which use the citizen science uh, compared to the other subject. Then I designed the course uh, and requested to the, my university authorities, can I offer a, um, uh, a citizen science full course? Because most of time, either this is like a one week workshop or a one day workshop or these kind of the things and students uh, get us uh, some uh, you know the primary knowledge about that but they are not digging deep uh, about the how the strength and then you know the uh, what kind of the benefit they can go uh, get in their whole life uh, as a researcher as a student as a citizen and then i offer the historical background introduce the historical background then uh, new technology and gamifications and how you can become an author of the paper if you contribute the data like uh, like like fold it uh, program uh, and then the different kind of the program and how or even uh, the citizen scientists become an author in a um, uh, high impact factor uh, paper when they were uh, playing a game how to unfold the protein where the scientists struggle for the 10 year and then these gamer just, uh, you know, they solve that problem within a three month or four month and then later become up. And then motivations, retaining, uh, uh, like recruiting, retaining motivations and all kinds of the things. Then like last year, I done a similar kind of the survey in India. Uh, uh, either the people are aware about the citizen science and they are willing to learn and when they learn about these things then I realize uh, most of the respondent uh, like 50 percent are from the uh, ecology environmental and biological sciences background they are and then coming people coming from the chemistry physics background they are not totally aware about and, and majority of them were aware about when they are in a service and they got a chance to participate in workshop and some kind of the forum. Then I realized we need to, uh, you know, the train the students from very beginning. 
so that's why uh, i uh, formulate a full semester course for the 14 week and it was successful and we have a student from the 33 country and i often talk with them and i often watch them their uh, profile and they contribute in the data even after they ha have passed out and some are in a different part of the world and some are pursuing their phd related to the citizen science using uh, one component citizen science as a methodology to collect the data and it was a very successful uh, and they have become a lifelong uh, you know that and recently i I, I, I uh, submitted a paper how we can include the uh, challenges and uh, opportunities for including citizen science in uh, industry curriculum. And it is under review. So hopefully it will be published soon. So it is an Indian case study. And I found some of the lead or elite institute uh, are more, you know, the um, uh, more uh, active in a citizen science. And the majority of uh, like, institution which is like a grade two or like a tier town tier two tier three cities they are not that much of the aware and they are not using it and then i, I use like a lot of uh, motivations and other things and even try to um, motivate the student if you want to get uh, pursue your degree in europe or pursue your degree in us and if you show your citizen science uh, related, uh, you know, the um, profile, like if you are participating in iNaturalist and you show your profile, how much the data you contributed, maybe you can get a better um, uh, uh, chance to get selected for the PhD program or any kind of the thing. So that kind of the motivation is like uh, motivate people. Oh, thank you very much. It's really interesting. I never heard like the whole course about citizen science not yeah. only for a phd student but yeah. it could be for for different students and of yeah. course they can also during the course implement already some citizen science projects yeah. and get these skills you know it's a yeah. highly um, uh, yes awareness raising yeah. activity yes yeah yes. because this is uh, this is a uh, elective course for uh, i have to follow some kind of the university norms i have to evaluate them uh, about their course curriculum uh, because it is a part of the exam. So I give them a task. You choose any citizen science project of your choice and mm -hmm. open your profile. And at the end of the semester, show me how active you participated in that particular kind of the, and I run two projects of mine, like a biodiversity of the Nalanda and then uh, early flower phenology of the one of the Himalayan plants. So I ask them, open and uh, you don't need to write the answer sheet and about this, but you have to show you participated the citizen science course. When you enter in the class, you open your profile and when you exit from the end of the semester, you show how active you were in the citizen science related activities in a, using any forum, either it is a NASA related citizen mm -hmm. science, it is uh, time for or any kind of the citizen science, depending on their interest. Yes. Yes, yeah. and I think it's very good way to keep uh, like citizen science hubs sustainable because students are now students after they are in different communities in yeah. in different companies and they already know the values they know they have the skills and it's also from institutional level also very good uh, like uh, sustainability activity yeah. to keep uh, citizen science hubs alive. So so thank you very much for sharing this experience. And I don't know if somebody else want to uh, to share experience because we uh, Agla talked a lot of about motivation, but we talk a, a lot about motivation from our perspective as scientists. But I think motivation from other stakeholders is also very very important and even more maybe challenging, like to include business companies, to include uh, politicians, to include other uh, also like uh, NGOs and and uh, that's uh, because citizens uh, like or ordinary citizens because scientists they are already in science you know we are active in science like every day but to make science interesting for other part of communities and to gain this trust in science is sometimes very complicated. So maybe uh, somebody from the audience could uh, share their experience. So how to involve uh, uh, 
other communities how uh, how to find this balance between uh, different initiatives how to find uh, uh, connections to to broader audience so i don't see anybody we have so many participants but i don't see somebody want to share uh -huh. Uh, if you permit, I will give a one example. Uh, recently, okay. one of one of the uh, you know the eco guide, he was he was not uh, too much uh, educated. He was just done at primary school, and uh, he used uh, he was in, uh, introduced by someone uh, because he is a, a nematic uh, coming from the nematic tribes, and he used to watch the birds as from the childhood hobby as a being a nematic person. So someone introduced him, uh, why not he become a citizen scientist? And mm -hmm. he started participating in citizen science. He used to make the voice of the birds, uh, being a tribal person. So he become a citizen science and he uh, was the last year, he was the most contributed person in a e uh, bird platform. Uh, he uh, make a 400 plus uh, entry in uh, eBird India platform. And he was a most uh, contributed person, not related. And he is working as an eco guide. Now he is one of the famous eco guide in India. Okay. 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 So very interesting actually story. So uh, if nobody wants to share their experience, maybe I will add something from from our experience or, or from what we did and what was not uh, mentioned. Uh, 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 hand raised. So. Okay, okay, so I don't <laughs> see. So please. Yeah. Floor, forget, yes. And then I guess okay. I could continue. <laughs> I'm sorry uh, for being a bit late uh, to the question. I'm not sure whether my, my suggestions are that new or that insightful. Maybe they're quite obvious. Um, but as we're embedded um, in a central department at our university. We work at a university. To reach out to the other stakeholders, we try to collaborate very closely with the departments who are very closely connected to them. So we have like the tech transfer and the innovation department. And they're not specialized in citizen science and not immediately interested, but they were open to let us come to their events. It's a bit like Monica said, actually. Um, to come to their events with for with business partners and industry partners to introduce ourselves, and the same thing for um, science outreach and science communication departments, which are our direct colleagues. At every science festival, or we have a lecture or a little um, experiment or discussion about citizen science, in which the broader audience can take part, and so on. So we try to map actually other departments, other offices at our university, it's quite a large university who might have a similar um, target seems, seems a bit, <laughs> it's not what I mean, but target groups or, or, um, or targeted audiences than us, and maybe not a similar focus or similar interest, but they were often open for a, a collaboration one way or another to reach, as Monica said, actually to, um, to reach the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We also have published because we did not only like during the project implementation, we did also uh, research, like actually um, quantitative survey uh, in different countries, in four countries uh, which are involved in this project, in Netherlands, in Spain, Greece, and Lithuania. And we did a huge survey about uh, motivation factors for, for different stakeholders. And we just published uh, a new paper about these uh, factors, uh, about uh, factors which uh, motivate different stakeholders from each uh, like stakeholder perspective the uh, main motivation factors and it's also like uh, our uh, maybe input to uh, citizen science and science as researchers and what what could be used and you can find uh, the link to the paper on our website on our uh, Vilnius Tech University uh, website and also we have, as Agla mentioned, we have uh, now uh, 
not the course for PhD uh, students, but we have uh, PhD students who is involved in uh, in the topic of uh, motivation and communication in citizen science. So it's from our perspective a lot of um, a lot of uh, maybe efforts already. Uh, uh, from scientist uh, perspective, uh, scientist perspective done, but as I said, from community side, from other stakeholders, it's always uh, maybe this interest lacking more than from from university perspective. So, Angela, please. Mm -hmm. I just also would like to briefly reflect on, on what Floor uh, has said uh, actually about the mapping exercise. So uh, uh, that's, I think it's a very good practice and we did it within ECU consortium of the universities to map the interest that might be connected to citizen science. And actually, it's very helpful to have this information in case, uh, uh, and especially for citizen science hub that uh, uh, tries to connect science and uh, uh, citizens. So I think, yes, uh, I think this is a very good practice. Yeah, yeah, Flor, that is a paper. Yes, you are right. This is the paper which I mentioned. Yes, it's just published like uh, last month. Yes. So you can find the link to the paper now in our chat. So can we see other questions or... So what do you think, Monica? If you don't have any questions, and uh, so we don't have any questions, we give the floor floor to uh, Crowd Helix because they need to do uh, an activity at the end of uh, this uh, yeah, webinar. Okay. <laughs> so uh, do you have someone from the How to Crowd Helix? Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yes, we're here. Okay. I wasn't sure if Andrea was going to do a an introduction uh, first, uh, okay. but I am uh, Case Jurgens. I'm the head of membership development at Crowd Helix, based in London. And uh, the purpose of this quick session is to just give you some information on how you can access the, uh, the community, how you can post in it. You were just discussing um, a paper that you put a link to. So this, this would be a great place to, for example, disseminate that paper to uh, a wider audience if you'd like them to see it. Uh, many of you probably have already accessed the Citizen Science Helix community on our platform. I know for a fact that many of you come from member organizations of Crowd Helix. Uh, so this is just to give you a quick uh, tutorial on how to use the community, why you should use it, how you can use it for pre-award collaborative partnerships building. It's also a place uh, to push key exploitable results that are stemming from projects that you would like to show to potential stakeholders. Uh, so um, I'm going to share my screen and give you a quick look. Okay, so you can see my screen now. Um, the majority of you um, probably already have an account, but if you do not, you can go to crowdhelix.com slash register. You will find your organization in the drop down menu, for example, Brunel. If you are not a member of Crowd Helix, then you could uh, type in citizen science. You'll find the citizen science Helix and you'll be able to access the platform that way. This is for those of you who are part of organizations that are not Crowd Helix members. When you access the platform this way, you are gaining access through what we call the extended network. This means that you have a profile just for yourself as an individual, not your whole organization. You are able to access the platform. You can view every single post, every single community, but your engagement is limited to leaving comments on posts rather than posting on the wider platform. That's called the extended network. If you would like to have a discussion at some point about your organization joining Crowd Helix, then we can do that later. But access the platform, and I'll just give you a quick, a quick look around. So these are the most recent opportunities to collaborate across all areas of interest. Uh, Crowd Helix's main focus, for those of you who don't know, is building collaborative partnerships between academia and industry to submit proposals many of which would be for Horizon Europe, but not limited to Horizon Europe. We're also using Crowd Helix as a place to showcase key exploitable results that are coming from projects, so pre-award and post-award. And it's our job to try to disseminate these to potential stakeholders. And you can see many of these results have varying uh, TRL levels 
for example. But now let's focus a little bit more on citizen science. There are 47 communities on the CrowdHelix platform, one of which is the Citizen Science Helix. It's one of the kind of more SSH focused communities. And you can see the platform is already recommending the others that you could take a look at that are maybe cross-cutting with citizen science like inclusion or society. Now we're filtering by citizen science and let's take a look at the community. These are some of the pre-award opportunities to collaborate. We'll take a look at a couple of those in a second. These are results coming from the project. For example, this one is specifically coming from Time for CS, Reflection Tool for Institutional Changes in Citizen Science. We would like to have more of these types of results posted on the platform. That's part of why we have created it. So have a think about the types of things you could share to the Citizen Science Helix community. Here is essentially the landing page for the community. So why was this community created? It's stemming from the Time for CS project, obviously. We have mapped almost 700 uh, citizen science focused experts from 50 countries to this community. So that is the reach of the posting that you can do. That's the number of people, the amount of eyeballs essentially that will see the content that you're adding to this community. For example, that paper you were talking about. Upcoming events that we are part of or hosting as uh, for citizen science and the community. Here are sort of the major players that want to be seen as very active in this area. If you would like your organization's logo to be featured here, then you can click the join button here and you'll be able to uh, showcase that your, your organization is very active in this area alongside these others like UCC, UCO, um, and other organizations I'm sure that you have heard of. Here are some resources, links to social media, um, and then obviously the two individuals who are kind of managing this community as part of the project and from the consortium. So if you have any questions about that, we can discuss in a moment. First, I'd just like to show you the anatomy of a couple of posts that are in the Citizen Science Helix uh, so you understand. And you'll notice some of them are coming from organizations that are coordinating projects and proposals. Others are sort of offering their expertise and trying to join a consortium. Uh, and there's kind of a nice spread of them here on the platform. So for example, here's one coming from a, a research hospital based in Spain. And Olivia has posted in the health experts and citizen science helixes, meaning every single individual on the entire platform subscribed to those three communities has already been notified about this opportunity to collaborate. This is a Horizon Europe health call. The deadline is in September. It's a research and innovation action. They're seeking social science experts uh, for this call. They are leading a work package. They're seeking expertise in these specific areas. These are expertise tags that have been added to this post that do a few things. They make it more searchable across the platform. So every post, organization, person, key exploitable result, group, which is like a department or a faculty. And these expertise keywords also feed into our machine learning algorithm. So when you post on CrowdHelix, the post is moderated for quality control before it goes live. Part of that process is the machine learning recommending the top 10 individuals you should connect with, and we will connect you to them personally. Um, she goes into some more detail about the expertise they themselves have to offer. And then you could either leave a comment below. And those of you as part of the extended network, you can leave comments like this indicating your willingness to collaborate. Um, if you are a member, you can share this opportunity with a colleague or um, someone uh, you think would do well to see it and engage, or you could send a direct private message. So that's essentially how you can engage. Please let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, I will uh, hand back the floor. Thank you. Alita? I want only not the question, but to share my experience with CrowdHealth because Vilnius Tech is already like, I don't know, like four or five years uh, uh, yes. part of the community. Mm -hmm. And this was a funny case because uh, our dean said, so maybe it's not a lot of value from CrowdHealth. We attend in different meetings. We, we have different connections. And already by the end of the next year, they said, uh, like, um, uh, like maybe we finished to attend that. And 
the last meeting in January in London with Kraut uh, Helles was so successful that we got the new funding for huge uh, Horizon Europe project mm -hmm. and had <laughs> connections which we never had before. It's a project in heritage which we never had experience, but we were involved with our citizen science expertise. So it's really, really like case of success being uh, a participant in Kraut Helles. And now everybody is happy and and university <laughs> will keep, you know, uh, pay this fee to, to, it's not a huge fee, but still it was like a question about if it's valuable or not. Mm -hmm. So now everybody is happy and we stay in the community, I think, <laughs> for a long time. That's amazing feedback. Really, thank you very much for, for sharing yeah. that. Um, yeah. Full disclosure to everyone. I, d I did not ask for that feedback to be shared, but it's very nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Christina uh, Kovate, um the vice dean, yeah, she's she's very active. She's been coming to our events for many, many years. Yes. Uh, and we have a number of events coming up. Um, we have another similar event to the one that happened in January. It's coming up in Barcelona in mm -hmm. October. This is our RTO members event. It's a flagship event. We ho usually hold once a year. This year it's twice. Mm -hmm. um, and that's coming up in Barcelona um, in October. So if you would like to attend that, if someone from your organization would like to attend, if you're not a member of Crowd Helix, we can have that discussion about whether or not this would be a good opportunity. But thank you for the, your feedback. If there are no more questions, then I will relinquish the floor. If you think of a question later, please go to crowdhelix.com, go to about and go to contact. You can do this even if you're not a member of the platform. Please send us the question and I'll get back to you the same day. So thank you everyone for your time and attention. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing um, the platform. So I think uh, we are done with our webinar. Alessia, maybe you want to add something? You began the uh, webinar. Maybe you want to finish it. <laughs> sure, sure. Absolutely. Just a few words, first of all, to thank you, Monica, Egle, and Elita. It's been a uh... Uh, great, great session, I think. And we already received some live feedback in the chat, which is not uh, common. So really, really appreciated. So thank you very much for your effort and your commitment to this this webinar. Hopefully uh, it, it has been inspiring for, for our participants. And of course, I would like to, to thank all the participants again for, for being with us. For this for this session, reach uh, reach out to us to time for CS to incentive to me, Egle, Monica, Elita, whoever you want. You will have all our contacts and PDF of this presentation, and also the recording will be live. And last but not least, check out our website because we are preparing our final conference in November in twenty. So we will be happy more than happy to have you all hopefully or some of you there we'll see so thank you very much again i think we can close the webinar and have a good have a good rest of the day thank you